What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Football Boot Hour. This is episode two. If you joined us for episode one, thank you very much. If you're joining us now, you are very, very welcome. I am, of course, James. I am the Boot Wizard. This is on my YouTube channel. You'll also be able to find us on Spotify just after this goes live. But as I said last week, this is not my podcast. This is our podcast. And as always, I am here to be joined by my co-host, Andrew from the Lockhart Boot Blog. Yo. And no normally I'd say hi and we'd have a little chat and I'd be like, hey, Andrew, how you doing? We're not going to do that because I think Andrew's got thoughts. Andrew has thoughts on something that happened today. We recorded this on a Friday or a, a very early on a Saturday for Andrew. And the Predator Rotero, the um, Pulse remake, <clears throat> dropped today. We will rank it as we do with all new boot releases. But first... Andrew has thoughts, and I, I need to just sit back and let Andrew have thoughts for, for a little while here yeah. on on how this has went, especially because you had a bad experience actually trying to buy these. Andrew, yeah. the, the floor is yours. Thank you. Yeah, so I was like, I had my computer open, was ready to go on the retailer here, and uh, also on Adidas is in here. And I was like, well, I'll just buy through the retailer and I'll go through Adidas if I miss out. <clears throat> so get the boots in the cart, bam, 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 bam. And I was like, why is it going through? And I was like, oh, it's asking me if I want these free stickers. Just add them to the box. You know, I don't need to click. Do I need the stickers or not? And so I went down, I scrolled down, clicked yes, went to check out. The boots were gone. So just that little thing, my boots were gone. And by the time I went on Addy, they were gone on there too. Just completely gone. So it was just like, you know, massive Essentially frustration. a complete disaster, um, yeah. which is kind of what's happened with most of the Predator FT models so far. Yeah. Like getting them has been a nightmare. Um, uh -huh. This particular launch, I think, was reasonably hyped we, people were kind of into it yeah. and then this morning we found out they were leather yeah and that really pushed them over the edge where people who maybe weren't getting them all of a sudden were definitely getting them yeah yeah and adidas made a point to say like this okay. is the only ft model that will be leather so it's right? just like okay you, you pretty much have to buy them if you want leather in any shape or form so yeah it, it really seemed to be, it was like I say, it was very clearly worded that this is the only Predator FT you're getting in leather. So yeah. better be quick. Now, yeah. obviously, you've had a disaster today. Yes. But you did have the opportunity to actually try and buy them. Yeah. So. I, I, you know, do you, do you want to go on this as well? Like, this launch... Like, it's, what is oh going on with this launch? Uh, yeah, like, you know, so they released in Japan t today or yesterday, really. Uh, they released in Singapore. They released in the U.S. They still haven't come to Europe. Europe is April 9th or April 12th or something like that. Like, Football Motion, I know, put up a countdown on their um, story. And, you know... J Mike got his video out, but it's just like, okay, they're not available till April 12th. So, yeah. Um, I know the shipping issues in the Red Sea have caused a lot of problems, but uh, yeah, it's very surprising. The balls still aren't available, though, even though the boots have released. So, that's kind of weird. Yeah, it just seemed like a little bit of a, a mess of a launch, to be honest with you, especially yeah. from me being in Europe. I am at the, the, the peak of these aren't <clears throat> releasing. So, because so I made a list of this. This is how frustrated I was getting this morning. Um, that the they released, like you say, in kind of Singapore, Japan, and the US. But Addy US is saying they're not going to get them till the eighth of April. Then retailers like Unisport and Football Emotion have said the twelfth of April, and then Addy EU, or like the Irish side that I can go to, are saying the eighteenth of April. It's just it's just a giant mess, and. Yeah. I have a couple of thoughts on this, and I definitely want your take on one of them. And my first thought is that this is just really poor 
from a company of Adidas's size, and this isn't the first time this has happened with this generation of Predator releases. They've been delayed and little bits here and little pockets there. And I think that it's just, it's really, really poor and it doesn't look great and it's not good for buying boots. But the thing I want your opinion on is I think that this is the start of something we're going to see more and more regularly. And you mentioned this with relation to the England kits and the mm -hmm. St. George's cross on the back of them and the yeah. big furore that's been created with that. This idea of marketing being done by doing something to deliberately annoy people and create conversation. Negative yeah. conversation is still good because every single eye is on that that particular thing, the, the England kits. Every conversation right now is not about the England friendlies and the England squad. It is about the Nike kit. And they're yeah. also not talking about the price increase. They're talking Which about three colors on a yeah, on three colors on a cross. Are Adidas doing the same thing with the Predator and just deliberately winding people up to dominate conversation? Uh, I think it's, I think they wanted to do that, but I think also, you know, shipping delays, a lot of the shipping delays are out of their hand, yeah. but, um, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if they're sitting there, you know, the board or the marketing team's like, yeah, we're getting so much attention. It's like, I mean, with, with the England kits, it's like, you know, what shows up a lot when you talk about the new England kit? You talk about Nike's New England kit. So Nike is mm. getting all this free advertisement. You have uh, Keir Starmer, the, yeah. the, the, the prime minister. Head, the, well, future prime minister, well, probably. Future prime yeah, minister. Yeah. Sorry, because I also saw uh, Rishi Sunak talking about it today as well. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, you guys can't get together for fixing the housing crisis, <laughs> rising prices, child <laughs> poverty, anything like that. But England changing the color slightly on the St. George's Cross, which they've done before, Umbro have done before, there's been yeah. no issues. It's just like, all right. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I Nike's loving all this free advertising. Yeah. Because like, like you say, it's been it's kind of been blamed on Nike. And therefore, every yeah. conversation is Nike. It's not this has happened to Nike. an England shirt. It's like Nike have done this. So every tweet, yep. every piece of media has Nike written in it. Um, and like I said, yep. I think a big benefit to this, I don't know if it was intended or not, is that it has really skewed the conversation away from the price hike. Um, yeah. Like, there, it's a decent price hike. And in the, in, sorry, in the, in euros, I would pay 100 euros for the regular stadium kit, I believe they call it. And then yeah. 150 euros for the authentic kind of you know one that players wear which is madness and that's a, that's absolutely absurd pricing like yeah that, you know they I, he, you want at some point for the companies to think that they're not going to keep getting away with this but they are yeah and especially uh, for tournaments i think that's yeah. why this kit is the price hike because yeah. it's a tournament kit and people will get like especially like English fans, now, I've experienced a few tournaments in a few different countries, but English fans pre-tournament are some of the most insane fans I've I've ever come across, myself included, to a degree, yeah, is yeah. that this, this pre-tournament hype. Uh, so I was in the Netherlands in 2012 when they went mm -hmm. deep into the tournament, and there was huge parties in the streets every night after they won, and it was huge, but it didn't start like that. It built as the tournament went on. Yeah. England, we start here and then decide we're just going to kick everybody down as we start to lose. It's the yeah, complete yeah, opposite exactly. uh, idea. And that's what I think that's why Nike get away with it is because people are like, I'm going to spend 100 euros to support my country during yeah, a major yeah. tournament. Um, they'll I saw grumble Gareth, about it, but they'll fork up yeah, the cash. Absolutely. Um, I saw Gareth Southgate today as well, uh, basically dismissing the entire thing he was like this is and he, he's right he was basically like this is ridiculous it's not yeah. it doesn't make any difference to me it doesn't make any difference to what we're doing um and he made quite a good point which is yes they've changed the colors but if it's not a red cross and a white background it's not a saint george's flag anyway and i was like you know what that's a fair yeah. point yeah but 
so um, with with that rant out of the way, I almost feel like we could end up on a on a, on a uh, podcast po topic just podcast about that for yeah. sure. Um, is there anything else you want to touch on with those with those predators before we rank them? Anything else that you think is like okay, we need to discuss that particular right. element? Uh, not really. I've kind of said my piece. I don't want to <laughs> dominate the whole episode with. <laughs> we do have a topic to these. get to. Yeah. We do have a topic to get to. Um, so yes, we we like the way they look, but mm -hmm. the release has been terrible. You got screwed trying to get a pair because of stupid pedantic websites. But where do we rank them? So we've got our tier ranking list. It's great, good, meh, bad, and awful. Um, spelt with an S. It'll come up on the screen. Uh, and our ranking is obviously based on uh, aesthetics. We haven't tried yeah, these. It's yeah, the same with everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do we like the looks of them? Um, where where would you rank the these these lovely new predators? For me, it's great. I love them. Yeah, I think they're fantastic. I know there's been a few complaints that maybe they're either not similar enough to the Pulse or they don't like the half-half color blocking. Because mm -hmm. um, they've, I think they've tried to replicate some Pulse color blocking, but done it in a different way. Yeah. Um, and I, th I think it works. I think they're one of the best Predators that have been released so far. And that's a very big statement because Addy have gone full heritage. They've gone, yeah, they here are all these heritage colors and you're going to love all of them. Even those hideous Pogba inspired green things. Uh, we've seen that color combination before. It's all yeah. heritage. Uh, so yeah, I think great is uh, is definitely what we, um, definitely where I would rank those as well. Yeah, absolutely. They're leather okay, so... too. It's kind of hard not to. <laughs> See, that's definitely, um, definitely one on your side that's, that's skewing the, Skewing, skewing it up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry, I am just looking down as I observe to my notes as I did last week. Um, so we are going to, for our main topic today, we're going to move on to that now. Um, we're going to kind of touch on something I made a video on recently, which is this idea that people are forming opinions on boots and really getting heated into them on social media and things without ever mm -hmm. having tried them, picked them up, put them on their feet, which definitely ties into what we were talking about last week about trying to form opinions as reviewers by having as many boots as possible, tried as many things as possible, and that not necessarily meaning that we're a clean slate. Uh, but we also want to touch on why people buy boots. Like, So we want to know down in the comments, what drives you to buy a boot? Now, be completely honest with us. It, are you driven by you just buy the same silo all the time? Are you driven by you just buy the same boot all the time? Are you a, a Mon Copa Mundial person? You've been buying them for 20 years and you're going to buy them forever. Uh, do you buy based on looks? Are you based going, I want this particular boot. This is the one I'm buying and that's it. Or are you a person, which we would hope to a degree you are because you're listening to our podcast <laughs> that is into a review? You want a full, in-depth, detailed review, or maybe you watch our reviews and you watch us, and actually all the information you want from us is how do they fit? You know, like, yeah. are you cherry-picking bits of information? Let us know down in the comments. I would be genuinely, genuinely very interested to know. If it's something else, let us know down there as well. So I'm going to pass again over to you, Andrew, because I kind of had my rant about this, and it was a full 10-minute rant that I went on um, about people who are buying boots, uh, not buying boots, sorry, coming up with opinions for boots, really slating them on social media, and then just having never tried them and telling everybody the worst things ever happened, having mm. never, ever even picked them up or worn them and how that, I think that damages what we do. I think it's harmful to the boot kind of society as a whole. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, you know, <clears throat> And you made your video, Noah went on a rant as well. And, you know, okay, you can look at a boot and say, like, okay, that looks ugly, that looks great, blah, blah, blah. But you can't go outright and judge, like, okay, this is a terrible boot, this isn't a, or this is a great boot, blah, 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 blah. Um, you know, the, the GX2, these being a prime example, like, you know, 
people were writing it off having not tried it at all. And, you know, if it's terrible, it's terrible because you've tried them or given them a shot or something like that. Definitely, we'd appreciate you watching our reviews, reading our reviews and stuff, and getting as much information as possible. But, you know, that's not always going to happen. <clears throat> I understand. But, yeah, definitely, like, I have seen a lot of this, like, okay, this boot's terrible, this boot's awesome, blah, 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 blah. This boot can't be good because of XYZ. This boot is awesome because of, you know, ABC. And it's like, well, you know, it's okay to form opinions on stuff, but don't slack off boots or don't put boots in a high regard that you haven't tried yet. Yeah. You know? I, I think it happens, obviously, it's marketing. It's the companies that are good at this. Uh -huh. Mercurials. People yep. are defensive of Mercurials that they've never put on their feet. Yep. Um, like... Hey, I get to bring it up again. Uh, the Vapor 13 that you didn't like. Um, yeah. I assume, and I'm imagining, whether you know or not, people kind of came at you about that saying that, oh, no, you're wrong, without having ever touched that boot. But, but it's a it's a Vapor, and it's a Mercurial. Yeah. So they're like, yeah. this is this is what I want. Like, And this yeah. is, you can't say a bad thing about that. And I feel like we're at that point right now with the Predator. I think the Predator is the new... You cannot criticize this boot because people are going to get mad. Now, thankfully, it's a great boot. It's really good. But yeah, yeah, even if you come really out good. and even if you come out and criticize a colorway or something, I think people get like very defensive. Um, I had a person right. comment on um, the video I made about the the sole plate issue. Um, <laughs> basically, well, coming at me with some personal attacks. Be saying that I'm not allowed to talk about this because it's the best boot of an entire generation. Um, mm -hmm. And like I say, fairly personally attacking me because I was... And in that video, I didn't necessarily criticize Adidas or the Predator. I said that there was a potential issue. I even said that the data set wasn't big enough. We couldn't draw a conclusion to say it's going to happen with every single boot, but you need to be aware. You need to buy from reputable yeah. retailers. Uh, but that's the level that I think people are at. Like, and on Instagram and Twitter or X, I think that's the that's like the the melting pot, the cesspool of people yeah. really firing out those opinions. Yeah, definitely agree. Um, I was actually surprised because um, my review went up last week and, you know, I made a big point about, like, don't wear the soul plate on, don't wear the FG on AG at all. You did, yeah. Just don't do it. And I was surprised the amount of supportive comments I got about that. People like, oh, that's a shame. Or, oh, yeah, yeah. Because I was fully expecting that people like, oh, you have no idea, blah, blah, blah. And I'm sure those comments are still coming. I mean, the review's still circulating, so. Yeah. But, yeah. And then... um I was surprised I didn't get any pushback for the heel issue on them. But, you know, I think it's okay to disagree with people. And oh, absolutely. It's, yeah. But, I mean, one, personal attacks are never, that's never acceptable. You yeah. know, I even pol when I get into political discussions, I don't do personal attacks. No. You know, you can, you can disagree with someone about their opinions you can, if they've got really bad opinions, sure, then it's like, okay, you're dumb. But <laughs> for the most part, like, don't attack people personally just because you no. love this product. Like, they're not going to sleep with you, man. <laughs> and, but this is where it gets crazy, right? Because you get these personal attacks, people going really in on things, and they haven't tried them. They're getting yeah. really mad that you dislike a mercurial or you dislike this or like in the reverse, the GX that you've just shown there is a, a mm. great example. People are getting like when the initial launch colorway of that came out, people went mad before it launched. So this is this is before anybody has had a chance to try this. Slamming it. Worst boot ever made. Um, yeah. what, what are they doing? All this kind of stuff. Um, and then, again, I put out my um, initial thoughts on that. I didn't do a, a full review on it. I just did some initial thoughts. And 
the amount of comments that just came in, mainly into my DMs, people just being like, you don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like, of the two of us, I'm the only one that knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm the only person that's had these boots on my feet. Um, but yeah, people are getting so crazy. And I think it ties really well into what we were talking about last week about getting your information from lots of different sources. And mm -hmm. then here we're talking about actually getting information from sources. And even if yeah. that source is yourself, get the boots yeah. on your feet. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I'll comment on stuff like Noah's been kicking my butt in terms of getting Japan reviews on some Japan releases out. And I'm always like, Noah's oh, kicking these everyone's look good. butt. Yeah, he is. <laughs> it's like, oh, these look good. They seem like they'd be good. Ah, oh, these don't seem great. You know, add qualifiers. Don't sit there and be like, these aren't great. Mm. Or, oh, I knew these would be bad. Or, oh, I knew these would be good. It's like, if yeah. you haven't tried the boots, you know, you can't form a full opinion. You can sit there and say stuff like, yeah, I don't think they look good. Or it sounds like they're not great, blah, blah, blah. But yeah. don't make definitive statements about, like, they aren't good or they're amazing or yada 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 yeah i i completely agree with that i think you can you can start to form an opinion based on what you see of the boot say you see a video of them obviously uh, j mike's usually one of the first people with his unisport reviews out and you can take a look at him and how they work and sometimes they'll kind of show a bit of soul plate bend and you can start to form a little bit of an idea as to whether that's yeah. a boot for you uh whether you want to buy it um now obviously unisport videos are a little bit a little bit review, a little bit promotional advertisement. Yeah, yeah. I don't hold that against them at all. No, no, no. Like that is, they're literally a store. They do great work. Um, but that you start to form a little bit of an opinion there as to whether they're right for you. But I'm not going to watch that and go, well, those are terrible. I'm going to go yeah. and tell everybody that that is a terrible boot. Um, and I think, and, and some of it's because it's not what you wanted. And mm -hmm. I think that's a huge problem. Um, is it's not what you wanted, so therefore it must be bad. Yeah. I And I've kind of got a theory about, like, the GX2. I okay. think because Oops. it's got a lot of the DNA from the Luna based on how it kind of looks and stuff like that and how they combine the two, I think there's a negative connotation around the Luna, and that just carried on to the GX2. Like, oh, they combined the two. Oh, it's awful, yada, yada, yada. And um, maybe I'll put on tinfoil hat here, but that also <laughs> could be misogyny. Simple as that. So I'm glad you said it because you, as you were finishing that sentence, the next thing I was going to say is like, I was going to ask you, do you think that's because it was marketed as a women's boot? Yeah, like, absolutely. I think, I think there was a negative. So, okay, the Luna didn't help itself because it could have been a better boot. Like yeah. there are inherent issues with the Luna um, that really didn't help. Uh, mm -hmm. The vast majority of people didn't have a positive reaction to the Luna, or at least not a very positive reaction. Uh -huh. You couple with that the fact that it was marketed as a women's boot, and I think you start to really create an issue, especially because while there's a lot of progress and the women's game is definitely being pushed more Exploding. into the spotlight, rightly yeah. so and it's it's coming on it, the women's game is from from here to here has come on leaps and bounds yeah. um like it's absolutely crazy um and i just think that people are still very against that there's still people who are like no it's a men's game and i watch men and women are rubbish yeah. um and then you have a women's boot and then there's more and more catering to women in football like you get yeah. women's fit now puma have women's fit in mm -hmm. most colorways and all their boots um obviously the luna's kind of done away with that but you're seeing more and more women's specific fits which can only be a good thing in my opinion yeah, um absolutely. like you don't have to buy them like yeah. <laughs> you you're not forced to buy them and it's not taking away from what you're buying but you're still mad about it um, and I think there's definitely a, a huge element of that in the Luna. Um, and then yeah. you're, I think you're absolutely right. I think that's carried into the GX2 
because there's that lunar element and people are like, well, I hated that sometimes for no reason and sometimes for a reason that's really messed up, like it's a women's yeah. boot. So therefore I am going to hate this. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely, and like, I will say you, you brought the Puma boots and the women's fit. Mm. They didn't get pushback for that because like, it was still the same boot, just yes. you know, catered to women. They didn't make a whole new boot just for women. So you've already got, like, not to go off too tangent, but you've already <laughs> got guys out there saying, like, oh, you know, they're just catering to women, blah, blah, blah. They don't care about men anymore, yada, yada, yada. But, you know, I don't know. I think Nike was hoping that there would be a big enough backlash to that that more people would talk about it. But, right. I mean, I think the boot was so... I, the boot just seems so meh that, like, nobody could get really too upset about it or not until the GX2 came out and then people started <laughs> having a seizure. That, yeah, like, it was... Yeah, it was such middle of the road that, like, what you're going to get upset about and then, yeah, yeah, they've combined it with what is the most popular Nike boot that's not a Mercurial in some time. Like, I would be fairly confident saying that the GX will have outsold the Mercurial um, the yeah. last run round, which is, I would say, from a Nike point of view, that's unheard of. Like, yeah. like the, the Mercurial is their line and it sells. And then this GX and everybody buys it. Mm -hmm. And then what you do is you take this thing that everybody loves and some people love it despite not having tried it because it's the cool thing to love. And, you know, you just, everyone follows along like little sheep and like, oh, this person yeah. says, so I, I'm going to say, and then yeah. I'm going to say, yeah. it's a big pile on. And then all of a sudden you take the thing that everybody loves and you combine it with the thing that nobody likes or is a bit meh and it's, oh, it's women specific. Rah! And yeah, it creates absolute chaos. And kind of like we were saying earlier, I think there's an element of that's good for marketing and everyone's talking about it. But in this instance with the GX2, I think it's probably hurt the boot more than Nike were expecting. I think a lot of people yeah. have stayed clear of it. Um, and it didn't help that they launched it in a color that was universally disliked. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, everybody's going to have misses. Um, yeah. I thought the colorway was fine. Obviously, this, this colorway is, you know, way That's better. This is an awesome banger. colorway. That's so yeah. good. That's such a good colorway. And, you know, there's a lot of great things about this boot. Um, there's a lot of not so great things that I'll get to <laughs> in my review. But, um, you know, it's like they've definitely listened and stuff like that. And they've definitely made improvements where needed. But, yeah, I mean, smashing them together with the Luna probably didn't help matters at all. But, again, no, just it's... try the damn things on. <laughs> yeah. At least try them on. Now, um, when I put my video, I had a few responses um, from various people. Uh, and uh, Derek from the DL Boot Room, who we both know, mm -hmm. uh, messaged me and uh, made a point which I don't think it justifies the having an opinion without having tried the boots, but it could definitely be a reason why people are doing it more and more. And that is a mm -hmm. lack of brick and mortar stores and people yeah. can't get to try them on. Like, you yeah. literally have to be able to buy them, get them to your house, try them, and then decide if you're sending them back or not. And yeah. in, there's a lot of areas where you either can't do that or it's expensive for shipping and returns. You don't mm -hmm. always get free shipping and returns. Um, yeah. Like, do you, I, I tend to agree with that. It's definitely a factor, but it's definitely mm -hmm. not a justification. Um, yeah. What do you reckon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely agree. Um, it's almost as if, the companies pushing DTC direct to customer sales has hurt them in the long run. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and this actually goes along with some limited editions. You get people, you know, being for or get some limited edition that they'll never be able to get in hand just mm. because of the nature and of the limited edition and just because you, even if you've got a brick and mortar store, you they might not have them. They might never. Yeah, be they're not going to carry enough. It. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, I think that makes things worse in a way. It's kind of putting more pressure on, you know, peer reviews and peer pressure 
on some things. So yeah, I, I think that might have really hurt the GX2 is, you know, a lot of stores aren't going to have the GX2 in hand. So, so I have... I've experienced two situations which are both relevant to what you just said. One is where I live here. Uh, so this okay. is an island. My access to top-end boots in brick-and-mortar stores is essentially nil. Uh, we have Lifestyle Sports. Uh, we have Sports Direct. We have JD Sports. Uh, some very big companies, some of which uh, yeah. international. Um, now, for a combination of reasons, some being what they have access to due to their kind of contracts with Nike and mm -hmm. one being what they can what they actually sell which tends to be the the lower tier models they don't stock them like I have a yeah. lifestyle sports store 30 minutes from my house if I go in there right now I will not get anything above a pro if I'm lucky it's mainly right. going to be academy boots yeah. um, which obviously doesn't help and then I used to live in Denmark in Copenhagen a literal five minute walk from the Unisport store, right? This was mm -hmm. some of the best times. But mm -hmm. Unisport, huge company, has all the boots, all the limited editions, everything like that, on release day of a huge limited limited edition. Let's take the, the T90, the T90 mm -hmm. laser uh, re-release, uh, the yellow ones. I went to the Unisport store in the hope of buying them. I, like I say, I'm five minutes from the store. This is not a big yeah. deal for me. And I couldn't get them because they didn't stock them. They have a brick yeah. and mortar store right there and they did not put those boots in their brick and mortar store. I had to go onto the, the website, website and well, and buy them. I'd gone on the website already and ordered them, but I wanted to go in and try them on. And, you know, uh -huh. I had a friend who wanted them. I was like, oh, go down and see if I can get you a pair yeah. from there. Yeah. Didn't have them in store. And that happened on many occasions because... They just like brick and mortar is just not not doing it, and I definitely think that has has an impact, like mm -hmm. for sure, uh, not a justification, but just slamming boots for no reason. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it has an impact, and like I say, handily all ties into what we we're saying yesterday. Get your information from multiple sources, but and definitely I make sure in this instance you're actually getting some information yeah. and trying yeah. boots before you form um, an opinion, basically. Yeah. Again. So, it looks a certain way. It seems yeah. a certain way. But don't make definitive statements about stuff. Yeah. I, I like to, to make statements that kind of go along the line of like, that doesn't look like a boot that I'd like. Uh -huh. Like So then I'm, I'm really tying it because I, I try to be extra careful because obviously I review yeah. and yeah. it could be fantasy, but I like to think that people like value my opinions. You know what I mean? I, I like to think I have a little authority in what I say sometimes. Yeah. So when things come out, I will make sure that it the like it's all about either the appearance. I'm a hundred percent. I do not like this colorway. I'm very specific. This colorway. I or I say things like that doesn't look like a boot for me. Like because mm -hmm. then it's 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 it doesn't look like and it's very specific to me as yeah. well. Yeah. Um. Now you don't have to go that far, but that's just yeah. That's that's my way of of put some, getting onto put some it. Qualifiers in there, absolutely. Yeah, and then and there's there's nothing wrong with not having a full opinion on something. No, I mean, good good gravy. Heaven forbid you don't have a fully formed opinion on something. It's. Do you think mm -hmm. that's part of like a, people's need to just have just go? Um, and have these fully formed opinions and everything like and, and people are f afraid of going, oh, I don't know. Yeah, I think like, that's got in, a lot uh, to do with it. In this day of social media, are you allowed to say, <clears throat> I haven't tried it, I don't know? Yeah, it's it's difficult. But yeah, it's like when I was on the uh, bootcast mm. with the bootcast boys and they were like, what do you think of the Luna Soul Plate? And I'm like, Have it, haven't tried haven't it. Haven't tried it. I haven't tried it. I've helped it in hand. It's bad yeah. <laughs> from what I've held in hand. But I can't sit there and say, like, okay, it's because this, this, and this, and this. I can say things like, I personally don't recommend it because it looks like it won't be that great. But yeah. I can't sit there and say, like, because I haven't tried it, I can't say it won't be great because of this, this, and this. Yeah, absolutely. And then 
kind of again tying all in together you've got are we then really starting to pinpoint into people who are starting to attack things positively or negatively i suppose because of their buying history the people i mentioned earlier yeah. The, the it, I only buy Mercurials. I've been wearing Copa Bundy Owls for 20 years, and that's all I'm going to buy. Um, okay. Generational things. Do you think that people with the access to social media that we've got and this need for instant gratification, instant opinions, and the need to be seen to know everything, like this, okay. you can't say, I don't know, people are then taking what they what they know and what they love and just defending it and therefore attacking everything else. I love the yeah. GX, therefore must attack the GX2. I love uh -huh. a Copa Al, so therefore I attack anything that's bright and and new. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely think there's an element of that. It's just... I don't know, Mike. It's a, again, it's okay not to have an opinion, man. <laughs> yeah. They're just boots. And, and, you know, even more importantly... Brands aren't your friends. They're not right, you your friends. You wrote an article uh, many I years ago. I always remember this article because it's bloody fantastic. Um, again, I will link this down below. Uh, I'll go and find it, and I'll link it below. This is this is a few years ago you wrote this. Um, the brands aren't your friends article, and it's it is still to this day. I, I literally read everything you write, and that mm -hmm. particular article stands out in my mind as one that I'm like, that is fantastic. Yeah. Like, because Amazingly enough, not. it was fairly easy to write. <laughs> Shocking, <laughs> Matt. <laughs> Shocking, Matt. <laughs> if you read the article, um, you understand why. Yeah. Um, if you if you read the article, which I'll link down below, please do, uh, you'll understand why that was very, very easy to write. But it's so true. Like, people yeah. are get like, so we're broadening out a little bit here from these, like, niche, I only buy this particular boot to maybe I only buy this particular brand of boots. Yeah. And it's uh, that it's, I am only going to buy Nike boots irrespective of anything else. And abs you can absolutely do that. I'm not going to yeah. tell you not to do that. But it doesn't mean you have to go and attack people who wear Adidas boots or New Balance boots or, or Skechers boots. Now, I understand mm -hmm. certain brands come with a certain level of prestige, um, yeah. And I would say at the moment, Nike is top of that pile. Yeah. Um, with the current releases, and I would say with the F50 name looking like it's coming back from Adidas, Adidas are definitely making a, a solid claim seemingly this year. Um, yeah. But I would say Nike press, uh, top of the prestige pile. Then you've got uh -huh. Adidas right up there close. Uh, then you've got your Puma. Uh -huh. uh, and then you've got New Balance have New really Balance. established themselves. Yeah. In less than 10 years, I think New Balance have done yeah. a fantastic job um, and really always will shout out the quality of New Balance boots right now. But there you've got what could be considered the, the big four. Like outside of that, and you've then got obviously, like I say, Skechers, you've got Lotto, uh, you've got then your smaller brands or your lesser lesser used brands these days. You've got your Umbros, uh, you've got your Mizuno, who I put as a little pocket all, all to themselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Then you've got your, your Adlers, your handcrafted. It's it's a whole thing. But for yeah. pure prestige, Nike is top of the pile. And some people like, if you're not wearing Nike, that's you're, you're not it. Like, And they get really aggressive about other things. Um, my brother, for example, mm -hmm. generally does not like Nike as a brand. That's just That's just his thing. Like, so he's very loyal to Adidas, which yeah. is fine. Yeah. Like, so he only wears Adidas boots. But at the same time, you have to realize Adidas don't care. <laughs> like, no, they Adidas, don't. Adidas do not care about you in any way. Like you, like, it's like you said earlier, it's a joke, but they're not going to sleep with you. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, you're I, defending Adidas. They, they don't know who you are. Like, yeah, I've got a buddy who's got an Adidas tattoo. Oh, and... wow. Yeah, and dude wore Predator for years and years and years. And he showed the sales rep in our area where I used to live in Texas. He showed the sales rep his tattoo. He's like, oh, that's amazing, man. And I was like, if I was a sales rep, I would have just dumped a whole bunch of free stuff on him just because he went out <laughs> and got a tattoo. Absolutely. But for the most part, the brands just don't care. You no, know, absolutely not. We're just, you know budgies with wallets attached to them. <laughs> I love that.
<laughs> budgies with wallets. Now, don't like obviously we all have preferences. Of course we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, absolutely. Like it, I'm, I'm definitely like, and even me personally, I do have a, a slight a tendency, inclination towards Nike. Um, mm -hmm. I, I generally like what they do. I, I like it's the way they market. I can't, yeah. I can't spin yeah. it any other way. Nike sell me stuff because they're so damn good at marketing. Yeah, like, they really they, are. They just do, and I buy it, and I'm sat here, and I'm talking to you, and I'm telling you that I'm literally eating Nike's marketing and taking money out of my wallet because of it. I am so aware that it's happening, and I still do it. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like the this, reptilian part of your brain or something yeah. like that. <laughs> They've chipped me. Nike know what's oh, coming. Yeah, right. But, you yeah. know, I, I, I think... At the, like, at the end of the day, you wear what you want and mm -hmm. you, you rock that and you own that. And that's exactly what we spoke about last week. You, yeah. you wear whatever you want and you, it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter what my opinion, anybody else's opinion of that boot is, whether it's good, bad or otherwise, you rock what you like. Yep, absolutely. But don't go and attack other people for doing the same thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you said it earlier, they're just football boots. Yeah. Like... It's we really we care worth it. so deeply about football boots, particularly you and I sat here. We yeah, spend yeah, absolutely. Like, you, if if you're watching this and you think we spend an hour a week doing this podcast talking football boots, you're so wrong. We spend hours a day talking yeah. football boots absolutely. with about twenty other people. Like, yeah. there's direct messages between us. There's a group of about twenty people, and it's just boots, 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 boots. We are maddeningly insane about boots yeah yeah and absolutely. i will still sit here and tell you it's just boots just boots it's just everybody boots. yeah everybody calm down it's fine yeah. don't yeah. worry about it <laughs> you'll be okay it will be okay it will it'll be, be okay. okay so i think to, to, should we should we wrap up our, our main yeah, conversation yeah. here yeah um so my i think I, i've got some good i think we've got some good points here one is obviously Try boots before you form definitive opinions mm -hmm. and start spreading them out. Add qualifiers if you're just judging on opinions or anything like that. Makes it and, and be nice to people. It's a it's a much mm -hmm. more exciting and, and, and enjoyable environment for all. I think the boot community can be such a brilliant place, and let's mm -hmm. kind of keep it like that. Everybody from absolutely whoever you are. Let's let's everybody be nice to everybody. Brands are not your friends. I think we should mm -hmm. definitely add that as a point. I love that. Yep. Um. And what else? Anything else you think is a key point to add there? Uh, no, that's that's just same. in general. I think yeah, same man. as last week. Wear what you like. Love yeah. what you love. Wear what you like. Own that. Don't worry about what anybody else says or thinks. If you are a yeah. huge GX2 fan, so what if people are slamming it? It doesn't matter. Uh -huh. Like You love it. You wear it. You rock it. If you love a Tiempo club, hey, by all means. Yeah, absolutely. You do you. Yeah. Go. Right. So, well, I, I, love our, I love our conversations. It turns into like yeah. this huge, this huge, like, embroiled rant of all things as we get mad about everything and then try and be reasonable human beings at the end. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm going to find yeah. the questions. So, um, here we go. Questions are present. Okay, so, uh, again... If you asked us a question last week, um, we are still working through all those questions. If you asked us a question this week, I have added them all to the questions list and we will get working all the way through them. Thank you to all of you that did ask us questions. Um, and there were some, some absolute crackers, to be fair. Um, and I also think, sorry, I'm still pulling up questions here. Um, I also think that we got some uh, some people who asked multiple questions that are really really good, uh, but we won't get the, get to them all today. That's what I'm getting getting at. If we yeah. didn't get them to today, get to it today, if we don't get to it today, we will get to it in a future episode. Yeah. So it will get covered. We will answer all yeah. of your questions. We um, like questions. It, we love questions. Um, yeah. If we get too many, if we get kind of over overwhelmed, we'll do a whole episode where all we do is answer, answer questions, questions. Yep. because that's the kind of people that we are. Here we go. 
sorry, I'm just pulling up the, I have the, the old ones here and I have the, the new ones here. Um, and I wanted to uh, specifically uh, shout out a few people for just coming back and asking us more questions. Uh, Boot Maniac, uh, Footloose okay. Boots, um, and Chris Pottle um, have all asked us some like repeat questions. And our friend Yuli, oh God, I'm mm -hmm. going to try and pronounce his Instagram now. Um, so it's X dot, and he's going to tell me Quetzalcoatl. whether I pronounce this right. Quetzalcoatl, right? Quetzalcoatl Quetzalcoatl. Dot mm -hmm. X. Um, so him as well. Uh, you've asked us multiple questions, and we will get to them all. Thank you very yeah. much. We appreciate it. Any questions for this yeah. week? Down in the comments, or there will be a story up on one of our uh, Instagrams, um, probably around Thursday, uh, just the day yeah. before we record the pod, Thursday, Friday, mm -hmm. depending on where you are in the world. Yeah. So we will start from the top of my list here, and I might dip in and out. Uh, Andrew hasn't seen the new questions yet, so I might throw one of the, a curveball at him with one of those. Um, so I have Jezebelin, Jezeb. Jezel, Jezel Balanese? I don't know. Um, Jezel <laughs> Balanese. Know, thank you. Um, what are our thoughts on the People's Speed Boot, the Adidas, Adidas X18.1? Andrew. Great boots. Yeah, just really good boots. Uh, definitely People's Speed Boot because it fit multiple different widths of feet and it was comfortable. It broke in easily. It Formed really well. I mean, when the Ghosted came out, there was a ton of Adidas sponsored players like uh, Takekupo, the Japanese winger, who would refuse to go into the X. They kept wearing their ones for ages. I know Jason Knight, who used to be at Derby, he's at Bristol City now, he still wears his white and pink X19.1s. Wow. Yeah. So there are more than a few people who just. Love those boots. If you've never tried them, that's definitely a boot worth trying, especially if your feet are a little bit wider side. You want to try a speed boot? Definitely try and grab the X18.1 or the 19.1. I think the 19.1 yeah. is a little bit better, but the 18.1 is excellent. I agree. And that's like this kind of covers what I think as well. Um, <clears throat> just two things to add. One is that I absolutely agree. 18.1, 19.1. I think the 19.1 is a little bit better, but you can go a little bit either or. Uh, they are yep. definitely the people's speed boot because they are so applicable to everybody. And they it's it's weird to make a boot that really works for so many people that isn't just middle of the road and a bit meh. Yeah. Um, and I could be wrong here, but I need to. I think we need to give a shout out to Jay from boothype.com because I yes. feel like he. I feel like the people's speed boot was his he coined that term he's the yeah, one that he started did. it yeah. um and like i repeated it on my reviews and things like that but uh yeah so a uh, big shout out to jay and the guys over at boothype.com if you haven't checked mm -hmm. them out then definitely do they are yeah. great great people yeah um, excellent stuff moving down onto the next one on the list um we have here here um, would like to know thoughts on the oversaturated boot market. I enjoy that that question isn't, is the boot market oversaturated? It's just a pure statement. The boot saturated is over, the boot market is yeah. oversaturated, which I definitely agree with. Mm -hmm. um, but what are our thoughts on that? <laughs> what are your thoughts? I know you have thoughts. Yeah, yeah. Massively <laughs> oversaturated. It's been massively oversaturated for years. I mean, and it's just getting worse and worse and worse. It We've is. got a lot of brands saying like, oh, we're, you know, we're making our boots out of more recycled material, blah, blah, blah. That's great. Don't release 20 different colorways of the same boot in a year. Puma, I'm looking at you. Every <laughs> few weeks, you've got a new boot. Every six months, you've got a brand new silo or an updated silo and stuff. Like, don't do that. You know? So I, I actually think that Sorry, I was going to say, I think this actually ties in. I just, I, I was just going to mention as well. Um, so Chris Pottle, um, and again, if you don't follow him on Instagram, definitely go and follow him on Instagram. Yeah, he does definitely. some really great digital concepts. Um, has also asked how many releases are too many releases. And I think that definitely ties into this idea of an oversaturated um, market. And then there is also, I, def I saw it. I could be going absolutely mad here. No, I've 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 lost my mind. 
Um, I was pretty sure there was another question that tied in, but there's not. Anyway, so yeah, like yeah. I suppose we can tie in. What are our thoughts on the oversaturated and how many releases are too many releases? So the number of too many releases is what we have right now. That's too many. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, the... like we again, we spoke about it last week. I think it's something that's going to come up a lot is this idea that brands are preaching sustainability and recycled materials and things like this. It's like, just make less damn boots. Like, yep. make less colorways. Don't go through that production for that many different colorways. Uh, like, I know it's popular, but how many predators have we seen already? Like, that's madness. We're in, we're in Six. March. Yeah, I, 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 honestly, I honestly don't know. Um, I, we could work it out. So, like, we are just towards the end of March right now, and we had the Predator 30, uh, so, mm -hmm. like, a limited edition release. Then we had the teaser release, that orange, yeah. the, the, solar, the solar red one, which is actually orange. Um, then we had the black, white, red, like the classic Addy colors. Yeah. Uh, then we've got the white out and the black out. That's yep. five. We've got the green ones, the Generation Addy, um, mm -hmm. the, the ones that are like, I think are the Pogba rejects. The Pogba ones, yeah. Uh, and then this new um, Rotero one. So seven. Seven. Yeah. We have had seven, seven Predator colorways in mm -hmm. about four months. Yeah. That's I madness. Mean, I think part of it too is, in a way, brands don't stick to their guns. When it comes yes. to colorways and stuff like that, they just so wanting to like cover every single base. Like, you don't need to do that. I mean, if you want to release that many colorways, that's fine. But every single colorway needs to be limited edition to make that work. Yeah, they need to it, come out. And that's true. Like one of the things Mizuno has started doing with like the beta in Japan is they say, okay. There's only a thousand pairs in Japan. That's okay. it. Of every colorway. And they go pretty quickly. Interesting. Yeah. But I, I, we also I don't hate that. <laughs> yeah. We also need to go back to like make, you know, have a black color that's just a standard color that will always be made and always be available. And yeah. then just another color that comes along every few months or so. Yeah, like um, it used to be the the Academy pack from Nike, didn't it? They just yeah. had that. It released, I, always, I think it always released in January for all mm -hmm. of their boots, and then it just ran. And you could always yeah. buy the the Academy pack. It was just there. Yep. Um, yeah. And now Blackout is is this big deal, and it's another mm -hmm. colorway release, um, and it's another one that uh, that sells out. And the question that I can't find that I'm sure was there was related to the number of different silos that mm -hmm. um, that brands have. And essentially was, again, I think it ties in, which is why I'm jumping to it, is why do we think that brands are going to go back to adding that additional silo? So obviously um, we went from four, even more than that. Like if you look at Nike 2014 that we were talking about last year, uh, last week, that was a, a mad number of, of silos yeah. in the end. Yeah, it was. Uh, and then we, we kind of got down to four four was stable mm -hmm. and now we're kind of at three like three yeah. seems to be the the way do we think that they're going to go back up and should they and my answer to the second part of that should they is absolutely not yeah. like three silos is more than enough silos you do not need more than that um, i'm speaking partly from obviously like this sustainability perspective that we're talking about partly from an oversaturated boot market and partly from a reviewer because I can't review more boots. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's it I don't have the time and I definitely don't have the money. It's very expensive. Yeah, yeah it is. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you're a big brand, it should be three silos. If you're a smaller brand, two. I mean yep. I love ASICs. They have way too many like <gasps> high end boots. Way Great. too many. I I'm and they need to simplify like crazy. Yeah, like I, I don't follow ASICs as closely as you would, um, obviously mm -hmm. being in, in Japan and I, I just have, most of my ASICs knowledge actually comes from you. Um, but there's just, they, there's so much that is confusing. Like, yeah. you, and that has to hurt their brand. It has yeah. to hurt their brand where yeah. people are just like, I don't know what to buy. I don't know what's top end. I'm just not going to bother. Yeah. Like, I, I um, and then 
the other thing that ties in, this is a question that's on the list, but I think we just skipped to that one. Uh, this is from a guy I think we've both spoken to on multiple occasions. I haven't spoken to him in a while. It's Sim061 on uh, Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, and he's simply asked, I've had four or five old pairs break on me recently. Is there any alternative to binning them? So we're kind of going back to that sustainability yeah. um, issue. And I kind of have two thoughts. One being, obviously, if you can just find somewhere that will take them to recycle as like a recycling bin, that's always mm -hmm. better than throwing them away. Um, yep. Running shops. I've got a couple yep. of running shops near me that will, you, they have a bin, basically you throw old running shoes in it. I'm sure they'll probably take football boots. Yep. Uh, but I think a better way and a company that you have reviewed, I am going to review is uh, Sokito. Um, mm -hmm. If you get in touch with them and send them your boots, your old boots, they will recycle them for you and they will give you a yep. discount on a new pair of Sukito boots. And I love that. I yeah. absolutely love that. I think that's fantastic. It's great. It's, yeah. it's really good. They've got a, they've partnered with a factory in, somewhere and um, basically they're going to be breaking down old boots and making new boots out of them. And that's an amazing idea to help so, you know, with this massively oversaturated market and kind of actually do something that's ecologically viable with the products. See, I, w I'm going to go off on a little tangent here away from the questions just because I think it's, uh, we, again, we might make a whole episode out of this, but um, Sukito are a very small brand and mm -hmm. they have managed to put in place a system whereby you can return boots to have them recycled and create a more sustainable system. They've also managed to create boots that are more um, environmentally sustainable, and they have a new boot coming that is entirely made out of natural and recycled materials. And yeah. they still cost less, significantly less, than a Nike, Addy, New Balance, Puma, etc. boot. So I think any, this is a tiny rant here, any excuse from Nike, Addy, whatever, that they can't do it due to cost is nonsense. Yeah. Because there is a company literally doing it. Okay, they have to, Nike would have to do it on much larger volumes. But yeah. they also have the infrastructure, the money, and the size to be able to do that. Yeah. And they're not doing it. We, we got the, the GS, the original Nike Green Speed. Like, when was that? 2020? 12? 2020, 12, yeah, for the London yeah. Olympics. Yeah. And we then saw, obviously, the GS360 um, mm -hmm. as kind of a remake, and we've seen nothing since. This yeah. is Nike's big sustainability project, the GS line. It's clearly nothing more than a vanity project because they've done nothing with it. Yeah. Like, we, we spoke last week about, um, so Nike are pitching, obviously, uh, FlyTouch Plus as being part of a sustainability thing to move away from kangaroo leather, right? If that's true, that's fine. But you've had since the introduction of Kangalite to perfect a synthetic leather and you've done yeah. nothing with it until now because you, they just don't care. I'm not answering a question at all here. I'm just having a rant because yeah, yeah. it, it boils my blood that, I don't understand how or why they're... Well, I understand why. It's, it's money and it's, it's marketing and it's, yeah. it's nonsense. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's so frustrating, especially when they're trying to make such a big deal about how green they're being. And if you just do a, a scratch the surface a little bit, it's all crap. Yeah, it's absolute crap. Sorry about that. I just they decided... Easily... Yeah, no, no. <laughs> they could easily tomorrow just say, we're cutting down on the colorways, you know. So, orders for the next, okay, right now is March. So, they're doing October orders right now. They could, and, you know, December is normally a time when there's a bunch of releases. December, January, February. They could easily go in and say, hey, actually, we're going to cut all these colorways out. And we're going to cut a silo out. But they won't do it. Because they're afraid of not flooding the market and not, you know, they're trying to paralyze people with choice and like stop them from like, oh, Nike's got so much stuff. I don't want to look at a different brand. So because Nike does it, Addy does it, Addy does it, Puma does it. Yeah. 
New Balance it's not, to it's their not credit isn't as bad, the, but still. Yeah. It's not necessarily that there's demand for it. There, aren't, there no. isn't. There isn't demand for this number of colorways. It's yeah. just fear. It's fear yeah. that you're not dominating the conversation on yep. social media. Um, Absolutely. Which is madness, especially for companies that really should be doing more when it comes to sustainability. Yeah, 100%. <sighs> Just, this this got me going. That has that's that's <laughs> we need. I think we definitely need to to throw that into a um, into a full podcast at some point, and I'll just Absolutely. lose my lose my mind for a little bit. Uh, um, would you like to pick the final question? I think we have probably have time for just mm. one more, uh, one more easy one. If you want to pick the final question there, and then we will wrap up. Good. I like. I keep getting this reminder that the document is. It's changing. <laughs> um, That's because I keep scrolling up and down on it. Yeah, yeah. I like this one. Okay. Um, this from Jacob Phillips. Jacob C. Phillips, sorry. What was the real oh, reason yeah, that that's a good question. Adidas ditched the Carbitex and our sock collars officially dead? So uh, you did a bit of investigation on the uh, Carbitex. Yes. Yeah, so um, again, I have to give my uh, give our friend Jay over at Boo Hype some uh, some props for for being Absolutely. the lead lead tin hat conspiracy theorist on this. Um, but the we, there's a theory. I I literally spoke to people at Adidas about this um, that the Speed Portal when it released did not have Carbotex in the forefoot, despite the fact that it was advertised as such and did have it in there. Uh, now, the person I spoke to at Adidas, I can't say who that is, um, yeah. but they um, they said, now they weren't directly like right on top of the boot. They said they would be surprised if that was the case, but they wouldn't rule it out, <laughs> which is yeah. which is a very interesting um, response, I think. Um, uh -huh. So... Uh, to, <laughs> Um, and then, obviously, in the new lines, the Crazy Fasts and uh, what's upcoming is that there's, there is no Carbotex. The Carbotex is yeah. still gone. Um, now, what was the real reason I had asked Ditch Carbotex? I would say that the answer is very simple, and it simply comes down to cost. Yep. Um, it is cheaper to not do Carbotex. They found a way to create plastic that, mimics Carbotex to a certain to a level where they were happy with and it then, so they ditched using Carbotex uh, yeah. altogether um i if if we're being very nice there's a potential they got rid of it because the Carbotex forefoot is very stiff and springy and i know a lot of people loved it but it isn't the most universal uh feeling uh some people yeah. might want a little bit more flexibility and mm -hmm. the new crazy fast and things do have that despite being still stiff they are um, more forgiving than yeah. the uh, than the Carbotex. So that might be a consideration. But with the direction that Adidas have gone with their speed boots, which I must say I love, which is let's do something mad, um, mm -hmm. I would be surprised if it wasn't for any other reason than Carbotex is expensive. Yeah, yeah. I, I would uh, have to agree with that too. And are stock collars officially dead? I don't think they're dead. I don't think they're gone. Um, I think we're going to be looking at them for quite some time still. But they're definitely not what they were. They're definitely not prevalent. But it's all cycles. Mm -hmm. um, I think eventually we'll we'll be back around at sock collars yeah, again. Absolutely. Um, it will it will be another it will be a big thing um, again in the future. And I think we're going to be looking at a superfly with a sock collar basically forever. Mm -hmm. I can't see um, Nike getting around going away with that. So I think you'll see yeah. less and less and less of them because that is the trend. The trend is back to floating tongues. It's back to uh, just regular laced boots. That is the trend in the market. And people can tell you it's because of performance or this or that or the otherwise. It's marketing. Um, and it's yeah. kind of the direction that the the, the business is going. But uh, yeah, I don't think it's dead, but I, I would definitely expect to see far less of them. Those are my answers. Dead. I mean, it should be dead. Yeah, you know what? You know what? I don't mind that they're there. I, d I don't think they should be dead. What I think should be dead is charging me an extra 10 euros for <laughs> a bit of material that's this this high. Yeah. Um, because the GX2, the Luna 2, 
I really like the look of the Luna 2 with the collar. Um, I think the collar on the Luna 2 is delicious, um, but I, I don't want to pay an extra 10 euros for this bit of material on the same boot. It's madness. Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Making the same bloody price. We know the cost isn't that extreme between the two. No, no. Especially not when you're charging me 260, 270 euros uh, um. off the bat for a pair of boots. That's we say this a lot about various things, but that's another one for another uh, podcast yeah, yeah. because you yeah, don't pay absolutely. the same amounts that I pay for <laughs> for boots. Um, <laughs> so we should definitely talk about that, but we will leave that for another podcast. Yeah. Um, and I think that is our hour. Well, it's not our yeah. hour. It's our. It's as normal. It's coming normally. It's our hourish. It's the hourish. Uh, the football boot hourish. Um, we are about an hour and three four minutes in. Um, so we will say goodbye. Thank you very much yep. for listening. Uh, please do get yeah. subscribed to this particular channel, like this video, head over to the Lockhart boot blog um, and check out Andrew's uh, reviews, all of his different stuff. I will leave that uh, boot, um, Brands Not Your Friends link down in the top pin comment because it is absolutely fantastic. Uh, Andrew, would you like to please give us a shout out for our social medias and how yes. people may find us and communicate with us? Yeah, you can find James at Boot Wizard Boot Reviews on Instagram or obviously this channel. Uh, you can find me at Lockhart Boot Blog on Instagram and that's my website. So just Google it. Actually, Googling helps me because it pushes my it helps my SEO. Oh, yeah, let's talk about the let's talk about SEO. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> God, yeah, no, it's what I um, actually, that's what I do for a job. I, it's actually yeah. my job is to talk about things like SEO. No, I can't. I can't do it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, thanks oh, for watching. Thank you so much for watching, so yeah. much for listening. We're on YouTube right now. This will go up on Spotify um, eventually once I get that sorted. Uh, one and two will go up together. Um, but that's it. Have a good one, guys. Yeah. Thank you very much. We will see you next week.